Good evening and welcome to our Facebook Live presentation of Metal Wreath. I'm Julie. I'm going to be your host tonight. This is Whitney, my assistant here in the studio, and Rick behind the camera. Uh, we got a great demo for you tonight, but before we go any further, let's talk about our giveaway. Every week, or every time we do one of these, we give away a $100 e-gift coupon. So if you're joining us for the first time, make sure that you like and follow us on Facebook, because first of all, you're going to be able to see all of the great things that we've got coming up. And uh, secondly, uh, it's going to get you put in the drawing for that e-gift card. Like us and follow us, but then we also love to just have a lot of feedback from you and have a lot of discussion going. So we do have a little question for you tonight. We're just going to type it in so that you can view it and give us your answer. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you and just having you interact with us. If you've got any questions, let us know. We'll get right back to you as fast as we can with an answer to it and as to the best of our ability. You know, this is really the very first in a series that we're going to be doing on holiday projects. Um, how to be creative with the projects for uh, decorating, for gift giving, for wrapping. Uh, we've got all kinds of great ideas for you. So tonight, let's start out with uh, something that we can use for doing some decorations that really kind of go from the end of the fall season all the way into the winter months. And that's going to be our metal and wire wreath that I'm demonstrating here today. To start out with, um, we've provided you with some templates that you might want to follow. Um, we've got a very simple shape that I'm going to show you how to turn into other shapes. And we have uh, a couple other templates that you can follow. If you look at our materials list, we have a link up there with the description that will take you to our materials list. And on that same page, you'll not only find the materials, you can scroll down and find some basic instructions, and you can find templates. Print them out and follow them. We're going to be making our wreath on a macrame hoop. And our macrame hoops come in a variety of different sizes. We have them all the way up to from 16 inches in diameter uh, down to really, really small ones, including one inch ones, two inch ones. So we can make these into door decorations. I'm thinking they would be beautiful as window decorations or even small ones that you could alter uh, the patterns and the designs to make into an ornament as well. So for demonstration purposes today, the one that I've got right here in front of me is actually a 12 inch loop uh, hoop. It's a brass ring, so it has that beautiful gold tone um, that we're going to use with some copper and with some silver and get all the metallic tones in with it. So to start out with, I'm going to show you how to bend uh, wire. Now, we have with us today some of our um, 18 gauge copper wire. There's a beautiful warm copper wire. I brought along with me some aluminum wire here. So aluminum, of course, spilling in with your silver. Um, on our materials list, we've listed a set of a 22 gauge used for jewelry wire um, that gives you all three tones in one set. And then I'm also introducing annealed wire. And an annealed wire is a steel wire that's still very easy to bend, but at the same time, it's got that beautiful matte black tone, which is going to provide a nice contrast. So we'll get to that a little bit later. So I've printed out the template that I was mentioning to start out with. I'm going to move my hoop aside and this little shape that we have right here is the basic shape that we'll follow along with. I'm going to tape it down to my surface just to make sure it doesn't move around too much. Now, let me just mention a wire jig at this point. 
because some of you are familiar with a jig. Perhaps you've made a wire jig yourself with some nails on a piece of wood. Um, perfectly doable for this project. You could also uh, purchase a nice jig like this where you could go to the go to the uh, pegs and rearrange them and get them in the shape that you want so that you can bend. Now, I kind of found when I was making this, I, I intended to demonstrate this on a jig, but um, I can actually show you how to form it faster than using a jig. So I think we'll just go the quick route with that and put the jig aside. Now, I'm going to just tear off some of this wire, unroll it. You do, do you work with wire much, Whitney? Have you worked with wire before? Oh, definitely. Definitely. The aluminum, the aluminum sculpture wire. I think that's really the safest to use, don't you think? It is. I, I have no problem using it with kids, and it's easy to cut. So. All right. Well, this is copper wire, so it's not quite as easy to cut, but I, if you'll notice, I do, I am going to just use regular scissors. I could use a wire snip if I wanted to, save my scissors a little bit, but it's not really necessary. So I, I measured it, uh, I needed about 16 inches, but you could also guesstimate how much 16 inches must be, might be, because it doesn't have to be exact. Um, now using wire, um, there's a little bit of a danger involved because while you're working with one end over here, this end might be flipping up and that could scratch you. So I do recommend just for safety's sake, and especially if you don't wear glasses like I do, to use a pair of goggles just to protect your eyes. And you could also wear um, some gloves. Uh, especially when you get into the later part of this project where I'm going to show you how to cut metal sheets. Those get a little bit uh, sharp on the edges. Wires can be a little bit pokey. Um, so we'll just recommend that you wear gloves. I'm not going to put them on quite yet so that I can demonstrate this. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to bend the wire around these curves. And to start off, I'm going to form that first 90 degree rounded angle that we see here. Okay, and then I'm just going to try and hold that with my fingers. If you want to, you could uh, hold the end down a little bit with a, another piece of masking tape. And so I'll come up around this. And then with my fingers, I'm, I'm kind of holding it down in one spot while I move it back around that curve. And then I'll move this finger up, hold that down while I go around this curve. And I'm just repeating that. So usually it's these two fingers I've got holding down, holding down, make the curve, go up. And if, if it's off a little bit, you know, it's a little fat, you miss the curve a little bit, it's okay. It's okay, because this is really just your basic, basic shape. All right. I'm going to finish it off here, come back around. All right, now I'm going to take it off of here. Remove my template, set that aside for later. And there's the shape. As you can see, not exactly perfect, but it's a great start. Now I can push it down to flatten it out a little bit if I want to. If you could, if you want it real flat, just take a little hammer, hammer it down um, gently, of course. Now from this basic shape, we can make a number of different shapes. I'm going to close it off first, which means I'm going to join it here at the bottom. And then I'm going to twist the wire around a little bit. And here's where it's good to have a little pair of jewelry pliers, small pliers, to just make sure I tuck that end down so that it's not going to poke me when I start working with it. These are steel jewelry pliers. And this one that I'm using has kind of a flat surface, a flat nose. 
I also find it handy sometimes to have ones that are rounded, like a needle nose, but that's probably my most used one with a wire art. All right, so what can we make with this? Why don't I take my glasses off for the moment, my goggles, and I wanna bring up uh, this little set that we have up here in the front. I made these very simple, very easy to do um, in the same manner, but this underneath here, this is a leftover cut portion from a paper towel roll, the cardboard inner. I put it on a piece of wax paper, mixed up a little plaster, poured the plaster inside here, and then put my wire shape, if there's a little down here, there's enough to uh, put it inside the plaster. And then after it dried, I painted it with a metallic acrylic paint. So that's kind of a fun little variation on this project. But I did this just so I can show you some of the different shapes. So this is very much like the shape that I just made right here. Um, I did take the bottoms and added just a little extra. I had some extra wire, so I made a, another little extra leaf at the bottom. But you can see it's pretty much that same shape. Now I can make that. This shape over here is a little bit rounded. So with that, I came in and I just kind of, uh, it could use a jig for this, or I'm just using my fingers, just made the, sh the leaf shape here a little bit more rounded, like so. And you get more of a floral shape like that. Um, the next thing that you can do is this shape and a variation on that too. This is where these little flat pliers come in handy. I can take and just pinch at the top. I have to kind of squeeze it with my finger first because I got little pliers here. And let me move that out of the way so we can see. So I'm just going to pinch the top of all of these like so. And while I'm doing this, I just want to, first of all, if you're just joining us, welcome. We're doing wire art today uh, for holiday decoration. And we are, of course, going to give away a $100 e-gift coupon, which will go a long way with buying gifts or things that you need to make holiday gifts perhaps this one that I'm demonstrating today. All right, now I hear a little bit of noise in the background there. I'm going to just stretch it out a little bit here. And this is more of a holly leaf shape. I can stretch that out even more, and I call that a holly leaf. So that goes into the holiday season. And then I could also take this, and if I position the plier just underneath where I pinched it and gave a twist to the left, now on the other side, a twist to the right, that gives us a little bit of a leaf shape. I can also pinch the insides here. to the left, to the right. Eventually we can end up with a shape that looks a lot like this. So that could turn into a poinsettia, um, a different kind of an oak leaf shape, go a lot of different directions. How's everything out there, Whitney? Oh, it's good. Good. <laughs> good. I notice she's watching intently. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish that one up just real quick here so that I can use it on the demo piece that I'm using. 
I hope that you will answer the prompt that we put out there for you. Um, we have a question because, oh, we just love to hear from you guys. We love your comments. We love to hear your opinions. And we love to just chat with you. So let us know what you think. Get the discussion going. There we go. Just repeating that left, right, tweak, left, right, tweak, all the way around. And that's more of a, of a maple leaf type shape, shape. All right, so I'm gonna set that aside for the moment. Um, the leaf that I'm gonna be demonstrating today, or the wreath that I'm gonna demonstrate today, I'm kind of going for something like, like this, but we're gonna work in uh, outline shapes of leaves as well as solid shapes of leaves. So let me move on to making solid shaped leaves. Okay, I have over here, this is decorator copper sheets. That's called a decorator copper because it is just a copper tone over a aluminum sheet. They come in a five by five square and a package of 12 of these. You can also get aluminum, you can get the real copper tone, and you can get a really pretty brass too, if you would like to get the brass tone in there and repeat what's in the, the hoop. Um, these are super easy to emboss and to mark with a template. So I've gone ahead and done the hard work for you and provided a template right there. It's with um, our materials list when up in the description, click on that link and you'll go right to the page where the materials list is and also the templates that I'm using today. Now I wanna put something softer underneath here because as I'm pushing the metal, um, it'll push down better if I have something underneath it instead of a hard surface like this. So print out this template here of these leaves and then um, you can use a ballpoint pen, you could use a wooden tool, something to emboss them with. I've just placed this over the top, doesn't matter if it's which side you're embossing from. And I'm just going to take, this is just a, a wooden, or I'm sorry, a ballpoint metal stylus. And as I said, a ballpoint pen would be just fine. And trace that. And you can see the shape that I've made there. Okay, continue doing that and you're gonna end up with a full sheet of leaves like this. And you're getting as much as you can out of a sheet that way. All right, I'm just gonna cut this out. You can see how easy it is to cut this out. You have a sheet of paper, a sheet of metal. And you know what? Because it is so sharp on the ends, I could easily poke my fingers. So this is a time where I think it's a good idea to put on a pair of gloves. I've listed some cotton gloves in the materials list. These provide some good protection, but you know, a pair of gardening gloves or even just hand gloves for keeping your hands warm, those would work as well. Let me cut out a couple more leaves here. And this will just keep me from getting poked too much by the sharp edges of the metal. You can round the edges a little bit. And of course we've got two-sided leaves as well. Okay. Now, a lot of times when you're cutting, you cut a, sh a part of the uh, edge where you've made your embossing line, or they're curling up on you or something. Um, I just have a wooden tool, uh, but you can find a little plastic tool, even just like the edge of a paintbrush or something, just to kind of push down those edges and smooth them out so that they're not so rough. Like that. All right. 
right, so those are the components for my wreath. Let me get that hoop back out here. As I said, this is a 12 inch embroidery hoop. I'm sorry, macrame hoop. Um, there is a difference, an embroidery, yes, an embroidery hoop's wooden and has two pieces to, that foot together. Um, this is a macrame hoop, so it's meant for applying, of course, macra macrame hangings. And we're going to glue these, these pieces on. Let me just scoot that up a little bit. Now, you can use any kind of jewelry glue. Um, there's E6000, there's Goop, there's a number of different types of uh, really tight bonding that are meant for metal on metal. Uh, today, I've got Gorilla Glue. This is an, a, a clear grip adhesive um, that's meant for jewelry. It's waterproof. It's very, very strong. It dries very quickly, dries very clear, so it works pretty well for what I'm doing today. And I'm going to just put a little bit of that onto my hoop here. I think I have a little bit of dried on there from the last time I used it. There we go. That'll come out a little bit easier. Now, according to the instructions, in order to get the best bond, um, apply it to both surfaces, but then also allow it to dry for two minutes before pressing the pieces together. But since this is a demo today and I don't want to slow things down, I'm going to go ahead and bond my pieces together now. And it will stay together. It's just in order to do the strongest bond possible, you really should apply it to both surfaces and wait for two minutes in between. Okay, so I'm just going to stagger my leaves so that I have a silver one showing and a copper one showing. Like so. This uh, is a first one in a series of projects that we're going to be doing that we're going to help you get really crafty and creative for the holidays. Um, we'll be having decorating ideas, we'll be having gift wrap making, gift making, celebration ideas. So join us throughout the month of December, of November and December. And each time we will have a giveaway as well as great unique ideas for you. All right, so I'm just going to do that small section. You can see how quickly this is actually coming together. Let me get the lid back on my glue because I'm really bad about remembering to do things like that. And Let's just set this one aside for a moment. Um, always kind of nice to do it on a piece of cardboard or something. So when it's time to set it aside, you can just do it easily. And I'm going to bring up this one that I've already applied a lot of the leaves and um, they've dried. So let's take a look. We can see the front side and we can see the back side. So if this is hanging in a window or on a glass panel on a door, um, it's beautiful from both sides that way. And you can continue and just make the thing an entire wreath. I kind of like having some of the gold loop exposed there, so I stopped at this point. And now I'm going to put on some a couple of those leaves so that we have a beautiful combination of both the outline leaf shapes and uh, the solid leaf shapes. So down here where I've stopped, or you could put those on in the middle somewhere, but I'm just going to start by giving this a little twist. And then this is where it's really handy to have that little set of pliers so that I can take the end grab onto it and 
so I want to make sure that I push it down as far as I can so that we don't have that scratchy end sticking out like so um let's here's another leaf shape I'm going to join it in pretty much the same area. This one has a little bit longer tail to it. I'm just going to wrap that around. If you happen to bend one of your shapes, as I'm doing to this leaf right here, don't worry, it's so easy to just push it back into, into position. course you can arrange how these interact with one another and with the hoop and even push them down so that the joined places aren't visible. Perhaps this one comes out this way, this one goes this way. How about one more? I just feel like it needs to be a group of three. Mm -hmm. This one I'm going to position out a little further. So we've got a question we've asked a few tonight. We'll bring that up on the screen again here. And if you haven't, if you're just joining us, Please let us know what you think. We love to hear from you. All right, so I'm liking the way this leaf is come or this wreath is coming together. But one other thing I want to show you is the incorporation of these little berry type beads. So these are super simple to put on. We just need a little bit more of that copper wire. I think I'll go for a little bit lighter weight wire for these. Um, if they have trouble getting them off the, the roll, I find it easier to just kind of grab it with the pliers and pull at it. And let me cut with my scissors. We have a number of beautiful beads in gold, silver, and you notice I'm just going to take my needle nose now and I'm just going to make a small loop to keep the beads from falling off that end. And then I'm going to add some of these metallized beads. I've got silver, I've got gold, that brass color, and some copper. We'll put a few of those together. They feed onto the wire super easily. All right, now I'm going to give myself um, some leeway here. I used too large of a piece of wire, but I want a tail on it like so, and then I'm going to take my needle nose and do another loop so that the beads aren't going to come off that end. Now, any place you want to, you can do this between leaves, do some on this side. I'm just going to concentrate on maybe covering up this area where I've positioned the leaves and I have their wires kind of handy, and I'm not doing any particularly uh, shape. I'm just kind of wrapping that around, and I made a bunch of what I would just say is berries, little metal berries. There, now I might make a couple more of those. Let's go back to this so you can see how these kind of curl and move outwards into the leaf and uh, around it like that. So there's some options for that. 
and then it would be pretty much ready to hang. So to hang it, I would take yet another piece of wire. Of course, you could use some string as well. I have a brass wire here that I would pull off. This matches, of course, the hoop that I'm using. And since I'm using wire, again, I do recommend putting on some goggles, especially if you're not wearing glasses, um, to protect your eyes because these wires can just so quickly come back and, and scratch you. And we must protect our eyes because as artists, we need to have our eyes very healthy, don't we? Whitney's agreeing with me. All right, so this is going to be ready to hang. I might, if I wanted to, add a little bit up here, add some more beads or something up here at the top, but that's a wreath and it's ready to hang. Now, before we go and before we finish up though, I have noticed that words uh, written in wire. I've noticed that in a lot of crafts lately. So I, I really think that that's something that's trending, something that's really cool. Um, but how do you write words in wire? Seems difficult, doesn't it, Whitney? Yeah, it's not. It's really not as hard as you think, especially if you have a template to follow. So yes, I do have a template for you to follow. Uh, let's make the word Mary tonight. Um, any word is possible if you write it out first, but on our website I have one that's sized to print out on an 11 inch uh, sheet of regular letter size paper um, so that it will fit onto a 12 inch hoop like I'm demonstrating on. If you want to make a smaller hoop, um, you're just going to have to shrink it down a little bit to the size that you need to fit in your hoop. But this one is sized to go in the hoop that I'm using. Now I'm going to pull up the one that I started working on. So you can see the leaves are, they're sticking pretty good already. So they're getting very dry. And I'm going to put it on this loop. I can see, you can see that it, it fits perfectly in here. But let's bend the wire first. Um, I'm going to demonstrate on the annealed wire, but if you are a person that has any kind of uh, issues with hand strength, I have a little bit, and I'm getting to that point, but those of you that have a little issue with the hand strength, you might just want to uh, use a softer wire, like the copper one I was just demonstrating with, or uh, an aluminum wire. And I'm measuring just by bending it through here. Uh, to make the 12 inch one, I have uh, experimented and know that I need about three feet of wire. And I am going to cut it just a little bit longer so that I have a little extra. With the annealed wire, it's much harder to cut. I do recommend using a little wire snip for it. Okay. This is very scratchy. I've got my glasses on. So it is a matter of having your template and then just as we did with the leaf shape, just kind of follow the curves, holding down with one finger, holding in place and then bending with another. But you'll notice it's really impossible to get that tight of a bend in it. So in that case, I'm going to get my flat wire, flat uh, plier, back. And in this case, I'm going to pinch that close first with my fingers. And I, I kind of wish I had a little bit bigger pair with me. And then I'm just going to pinch the end shut. There we go. So now we have that bend tight. All right, I'm going to go around the top of the end and then go back up and it's a good idea to do it kind of the way I'm doing it where you make your pinches as you go along you know you might ask could I just do all the curves and then come back and pinch them all well it might affect the length that you need with your wire so I would just do them as you go along 
And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm okay with that little notch in the M there. And now I'm going to come back around, pushing down as I go, and come back around the E, like so. Then let's go back up the R. R's are got a little bit of a bend in the top, just in that one little corner. I'm using my hand to push it back down. Then we're coming back up around here. Another R. Probably would help if I would bend it a little with this first. Pinch. You can always move them back into place if they get bent out of place. Coming back up around that edge. Pinch that a little bit. It is scratching at my arm a little bit too, so I probably would have been better off putting some gloves on. And I've got a little bit less with this, so I'm going to make that wide a little shorter. All right, now let's move that template out of the way. And of course, it wants to bend. So I can push it down. If I had a little hammer, I could come along and just hammer little bits of that down and flatten it. I'm just kind of using my hands to bend it back into place. If you have something that you don't really care for, you can do some bending to get it more into the shape you'd like. But that's pretty much close where I'd like it to be. So let's bring the hoop back. And we're going to just attach it on either side of the hoop. I think I'll start with Mary first. It's OK for it to come up over the edge a little bit, like so. And I did just knock one of my leaves off there, I see, because they weren't quite dry. So yeah, do wait until it's completely dry before doing this. And then attach on this side by twisting. In this case, I've got a lot of excess. I did leave a little too much on this end. So I'm going to take my wire snip and I'm just going to cut off that edge just by squeezing it here. Okay. Mary! We're feeling merry. Let's take a look now before we do our drawing for that e-gift card. A uh, hundred dollars could be yours. Cross your fingers. Let's take a look at some of the examples that I have here. I've already showed you this a couple of times. Um, so this was kind of a simpler design. That's kind of what I was headed for today. I wanted to to show you some different techniques, but really a fairly simple design, easy to start out with. Uh, let's go to this one next. So this little one, not quite small enough to really be an ornament, but um, it would be, I think, a very good window design. And if the edges get bent up at all like that one just did, it's so easy to put them back into place by pushing them. This one incorporates the outline shapes as well as uh, tricolored leaves. And one more here I kind of wanted to show you. Because this, this does a little bit different things. I incorporated the Mary text again. Um, I added a pretty bead up here where it's going to hang. Just a little contrast up there. I created the shapes in the form of mistletoe leaves, um, oak type leaves, but then I took and kind of traced that shape to make these shapes here. So we're echoing the same shape there. And of course, some of the berry beads here on the side. 
All right. Well, Whitney, do you have any questions or any thoughts after watching this demo? Do you think you'd like to try making one of these? Anything concern you about it? No concerns. I definitely want to try it. And I know you misspoke earlier in saying embroidery hoop. I, I that. did. But you now have me thinking about maybe using an embroidery hoop with the metal leaves as I, well. I do think that would definitely be fun. Um, Whitney, she does some embroidery, and so she has the wooden embroidery hoops. And even though I, I tripped over my tongue and misspoke earlier and called this an embroidery hoop, when in fact this is a macrame hoop, um, she thinks that she's going to go try to do this project and see how you would have that contrast between the metal and the wood of the embroidery hoop. So I think that'd be beautiful. Absolutely. Yes. I'm also wondering about, I mean, these are lovely finishes, but there are ways you can alter metal finishes. And so oh. I'm thinking about some of those products also. Yes, that's a very, very good idea. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I've listed um, some rub and buff in the materials list as an option. Um, rub and buff is a, a paint that you could apply to these leaves. Uh, especially the solid ones, um, just give it a little rub of a, a kind of a, a brownish color perhaps, and um, it would give it an antique quality. Now if this is hanging outside on a doorway, um, it's going to be fine really, protected from the weather, but especially if you were using the copper or the brass, because those are the solid metals, uh, you'd get a little bit of a patina on them. Eventually, you'd get a little bit of green, a little bit of grayish tone to them. So naturally, they'd patina. But by using rub and buff, you would be able to uh, control exactly how that patina looks. All right. Well, we're going to give you the name of the winner for our $100 e-gift coupon right now. Congratulations to you. Um, that's it for our demonstration. Come back next time. We've got another wonderful holiday themed demonstration for you. And happy holidays, everyone.